Welcome to our YouTube channel, where we explore the essence of the human experience through books. Today, we delve into the transformative ideas presented in the groundbreaking book, Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience, by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. So, let's dive into the summary of this incredible book. But before we dive into the content, I kindly request a moment of your time to appreciate this video by liking it, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that notification bell. Your support means a lot to me. Thanks a lot. In Flow, Csikszentmihalyi introduces the concept of flow as a state of optimal experience, where individuals immerse themselves fully in an activity to the point of complete absorption and enjoyment. This state of flow is characterized by intense focus, high concentration, and a deep sense of satisfaction. According to Csikszentmihalyi, flow occurs when the level of challenge presented by an activity matches the individual's skill level. When these two factors are in balance, the individual experiences a state of flow that leads to enhanced performance, creativity, and overall well-being. Csikszentmihalyi emphasizes the importance of finding activities that promote flow in our lives, as these moments of optimal experience can lead to greater fulfillment and happiness. By engaging in activities that challenge us and allow us to grow, we can tap into our full potential and experience a deep sense of satisfaction. In Flow, Csikszentmihalyi also discusses the role of mindfulness in achieving flow states. By learning to be fully present in the moment and focusing our attention on the task at hand, we can enhance our ability to enter into flow and experience moments of peak performance. Throughout the book, Csikszentmihalyi shares insights from his extensive research and offers practical advice on how to cultivate flow in our daily lives. By embracing challenges, setting clear goals, and seeking out activities that align with our interests and strengths, we can increase our chances of experiencing flow and living a more meaningful life. Now, let's take a deeper dive into some key concepts explored in Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. One of the central ideas in the book is the concept of the autotelic personality. Csikszentmihalyi describes individuals with an autotelic personality as those who are internally motivated and find joy in activities for their own sake, rather than external rewards or validation. These individuals are often characterized by a strong sense of focus, creativity, and resilience. They are able to enter into flow more easily and frequently because they are intrinsically motivated to engage in activities that bring them fulfillment and satisfaction. Csikszentmihalyi also highlights the importance of finding a balance between challenge and skill in order to enter into flow. If the challenge is too easy, we may become bored or disengaged. On the other hand, if the challenge is too difficult, we may feel overwhelmed and anxious. Finding that sweet spot where challenge and skill level are balanced is essential for entering into a state of flow. Another key concept discussed in flow is the idea of flow in various aspects of our lives, including work, relationships, and leisure activities. Csikszentmihalyi suggests that by approaching all aspects of our lives with a flow mindset, we can experience greater fulfillment and happiness. By immersing ourselves fully in each moment and giving our full attention to the task at hand, we can elevate our experiences and find joy in even the most mundane activities. Csikszentmihalyi's research shows that those who consistently experience flow in their lives tend to have higher levels of overall well-being and satisfaction. Flow explains why we seek happiness in externals and what's wrong with it, where you can really find enjoyment in life, and how you can truly become happy by creating your own meaning of life. Flow is a simple title for a book the author's name I can't pronounce to save my life, you do it, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, apparently it's Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Published in 1990, Mihai digs into the state of effortless work, where challenges and skills align perfectly and time seems to fly. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi is a professor of psychology with a PhD from the University of Chicago. He has been described as the global leader in research on positive psychology, creativity, and motivation. His other books based on this research include Creativity, The Psychology of Discovery and Invention and Finding Flow, The Psychology of Engagement with Everyday Life. Here are my three favorite takeaways. Pleasure and enjoyment are two different things. Flow is where challenges and skills match. Life goals are irrelevant, so set a life goal. I bet one in three have you scratching your head, so let's do some explaining. Lesson 1, Pleasure and Enjoyment are not the same thing. This is a really cool differentiation. Pleasure is what most people nowadays confuse with happiness. It comes from sensory experiences, like eating a pizza, getting a massage, or having sex and takes away your control of your attention. When you're busy munching on a tasty slice of chicken supreme, you can't really control what you pay attention to, because all of it is taken up by your sense of taste. Enjoyment, on the other hand, comes from concentrating and consciously focusing, which gives you back your control over your attention. 
This is where true happiness lies, as enjoyment allows you to work towards your most important goals and to go beyond the limitations of your genes. Many people opt for pleasure instead of enjoyment, which the world makes easy, as we seem to live in instant gratification land now, which is also why many people are so miserable. But how can you find enjoyment? By trying to spend a lot of time in flow. Lesson 2, flow is the state where challenges and skills match, so that time flies by. Flow is what's behind every good video game. It is the state where you are so immersed in the activity you're doing, that you're completely forgetting about all your worries and anxieties, and you look up after hours, wondering where time went. How can you trigger it? Two things. Pick an activity you find rewarding, something that's meaningful to you, without any external incentive, like money or fame. Make sure the challenge of the activity matches your skill level. The first part is straightforward. It means you should have fun. Plant a tree, draw a comic, write an article about the minions, whatever you think is meaningful to you. There can't be any money involved. Don't do it for fame, wealth, or even religion. Just because you think it's awesome. Part 2 is a bit harder. Flow is triggered when the challenge isn't so hard you'll get frustrated, while your skills aren't so good already that you get bored. It's right in between. If you decide to pick up chess, play on an easy setting against your computer first. Then, get a friend to play against you who's slightly better than you. Once you consistently beat her, you can move to the next level. Basically, flow is where your life feels like the perfect game, you just want to keep on going and going and going. So make some time for your hobbies or take up a fun project, you never know what the skills might be good for. Lesson 3, life goals are irrelevant, so set a life goal. I love this. The summary says you can create your own meaning of life. To do so, you simply have to set an ultimate goal for your life. Here's the best part, it doesn't matter what that goal is, as long as it keeps getting you into flow without caring what other people think. This is the best thing a book could tell you. It's all you want to hear. Go set some crazy goal and tell others to get lost if they tell you it's stupid. If it keeps you challenged so your skills keep growing and gets more complex as you go along, you're golden. This is exactly what I'm doing with 4-minute books. I make sure I read and write every day, no matter if no one reads it. I do share it, so people can benefit, but I'm doing it for the sake of itself. I have a hunch that the more you do of that, the more successful you'll be. Here are some main tips from the book. First tip, read the happiness hypothesis first, then this will make even more sense. It lists flow as the best option of one of the two voluntary activities you should strive for, to maximize your happiness. Second tip, think back to when you were 8 to 14 years old. What did you enjoy doing the most? Chances are your flow activity is somewhere in there. I can't recommend this summary enough, it's so packed with insights, I had some serious trouble picking three things. It makes sense from start to finish and it's a very down-to-earth call to action for happiness. It doesn't scream at you to get happy, like some of the more over-enthusiastic self-help books, which have their place, ain't that right, Spartan up, but just shows you the path that'll most likely get you there. He also has a TED Talk, which I have to check out yet, but I'm sure it is worth watching. Flow explores how we can experience enjoyment in our lives by controlling our attention and strengthening our resolve. This is achieved by being immersed in an activity or subject that makes us neither anxious, if it's too hard, nor bored, if it's too easy. In this flow state, we lose our self-consciousness, selfishness, and sense of time. Using goal-setting and immediate feedback, we can achieve a state of flow that improves our relationship with work, increases our self-worth and gives our lives meaning. Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi is an insightful book that explores the concept of optimal experience and how to achieve it. Here are three reasons why this book is definitely worth reading. With its thought-provoking insights and research-based evidence, it offers a fresh perspective on finding happiness and fulfillment in everyday life. The book provides practical strategies for creating flow, helping readers understand how to improve their focus, productivity, and overall well-being. Combining scientific studies, personal stories, and practical advice, flow is an engaging and accessible read that keeps you engaged from start to finish. Those are the individuals who truly deserve to immerse themselves in this extraordinary book. Anyone who wants to be more engaged with their relationships, their work or the world. Anyone aiming to rise out of mediocrity and gain mastery over something. Anyone who wants to know how their health can be improved by ancient wisdom and diverse cultures. The 18-year-old, who quit three sports teams already and is frustrated because she can't seem to find the right thing, the 42-year-old restaurant manager, who's in a bit of a rut at work, and anyone who has never played a video game. Here are some invaluable insights gleaned from this captivating book, I trust you will find them exceedingly beneficial. Feel free to delve deeper into its wisdom and let it inspire new perspectives and ideas in your journey. 1. 
we use religion and luxury to hide from an indifferent, meaningless world. When we view our lives from a distance, they seem insignificant. And when we examine them closely, we notice that we're unhappy and unfulfilled. To help us cope, most of us look for comfort in religion or we seek external rewards, like wealth or fame. While this approach seems to make sense, it can also lead to us abandoning our critical faculties. For example, while organized religions like Christianity and Islam have provided us with rules to live by and given our lives meaning, our first-hand discovery of our predicament in the universe has shown the principles of religion to be wrong. Still, many people continue to follow religious ideologies because they're more comfortable thinking of life as meaningful. Also, many empires and cultures led their citizens to believe they'd mastered their fates, for instance, the Romans at the height of their power and the Chinese before the Mongol invasion. Although this belief comforted people, it proved completely wrong as each of these civilizations collapsed. And if we're not hiding behind religion or political ideology to avoid the pointlessness of our lives, we're struggling to acquire external rewards like power, wealth or fame. But these don't satisfy us for very long either. Certainly we live in luxurious times and people from the past wouldn't believe the conveniences that modern life provides. But having more money and acquiring more stuff doesn't seem to make us happier. As one study showed, satisfaction with life doesn't correlate strongly with being wealthy. You don't need to look far to see evidence of this, just think about the number of rich patients that psychiatrists treat regularly. So in order to give our lives meaning, we try to change the environment around us, whether by displaying our wealth to impress others or chasing powerful positions. Yet these all fail to sustain our happiness. 2. Our genes impel us to seek basic pleasures, not the skills and challenges found in enjoyment. While our attention can manage only a limited amount of information during our lifetime, from this dwindling resource most of us choose instant gratification as compensation for the daily grind of our lives. This is because we favor simple pleasure over the more rewarding, yet more difficult to attain, enjoyment. 3. The elements of enjoyment are available to everyone, but the goal is unique to each of us. Across different languages and cultures, people use the same terms to describe what they feel when they are in the zone. This feeling is one of enjoyment rather than pleasure and it comes when you are engaged in a task or activity that balances skills and challenges, has clear goals and immediate feedback. 4. Developing new and interesting skills requires facing challenges that are tied to personal rewards. One morning in Naples, a U.S. tourist walked into an antique store and asked to buy a sculpture. The owner quoted a steep figure, yet when he saw the tourist was about to pay he claimed the sculpture wasn't for sale. 5. With discipline, we can use our senses and movements to help us tune into a heightened state of awareness. For most of us, the idea of paying attention to our walking is an unusual one. Walking simply gets us from A to B. But by paying attention to the variety of sights around you, the people, their interactions, historical relics, architecture and so on, even the most routine actions, such as walking, can be transformed. By practicing mindfulness of our surroundings, we can learn to perceive much more than our automatic response to the world allows. 6. Our memories and thoughts can be cultivated to focus on complex ideas rather than the flaws of the self. Many of us who play sports and exercise gain enjoyment from the focused attention these activities require. But it's not only through sports that we can achieve this, we can also use our minds to play games and get into the flow state, which produces enjoyment. Such a mental flow state can result from engaging in language and memory games and exercises. For instance, crosswords kill time on trains, but this pursuit is dependent on an external stimulus. Instead, try creating your own crossword puzzles. Not only can this lead to flow, but it also improves your wordplay skills, making conversations more fun by transcending the usual small talk and mundane exchanges. 7. Work that you treat like a game, with intrinsic rewards and varied skills, ceases to be work. Many people are dissatisfied with their daily routines and often their jobs are to blame. What makes matters worse is that their leisure time is spent recovering from their work in the laziest way. However, work can be developed into something that provides a challenge, focuses our attention and reduces our anxieties. 8. Engaging with family, friends and community is vital for our happiness, self-expression and growth. Busy trains and open plan offices can impinge on our freedom and individuality. Time spent alone allows us to give our undivided attention to something, but it can also lead to boredom. That's when we need the support of the people we know and trust. In short, good family, friends and neighbors. 9. Focused attention distances us from our anxiety, helping us to gain perspective and find new ways to grow. We're all faced with misfortune at some time or other. Rather than simply giving up because we feel unable to handle the situation, we could employ the following three strategies. 
First, we should let go of our egos and trust in our ability to handle situations as they arise. 10. Discover purpose in life through having unified goals and the resolve to put them into action. As Earth is not the center of the universe and our lives are manipulated by our genes, life can seem bereft of ultimate meaning. Yet we can certainly create meaning and the beauty of this is that each of us can choose what that meaning is. To find your meaning you need an ultimate goal in life to focus on. The end goal is irrelevant, as long as it immerses you fully in increasingly complex challenges, allowing you to disregard others' opinions. In conclusion, Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi offers valuable insights and practical tools for cultivating flow in our lives and unlocking our true potential. By striving to find activities that challenge us, engage our interests, and bring us joy, we can experience moments of optimal experience that lead to greater fulfillment and meaning. This book is a must-read for anyone interested in exploring the power of human potential and seeking to unlock their own path to fulfillment. You can find the link to acquire a copy of this incredible book in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed that video, if you found this book summary helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more book summaries and insightful content. And share this uplifting summary with someone who may benefit from hearing them. Leave a comment down below if you've read this book or have any other recommendations for us. Until next time, stay awesome and keep learning.